Welcome once again to the 13 Nights of Halloween. Hey, everybody. Sure. Thanks for joining us once again. You sure we're rolling, right? Yeah, it's it's counting up. Look, you said that once before, and it turned out it wasn't. I'm going to kill you right now. I'm carrying your baby. Good. Um, good night, folks. <laughs> I can't think of anything scarier than that. <laughs> Hi, this is Big Anglovich. And this is Rich Outfield. And he actually choked me. It's an audio podcast. <laughs> That's okay. You wouldn't have made the correct strangling noises if I hadn't. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of our 13th annual... 13 Nights of Halloween here on the Doonstief Audio Fiction oh. Magazines. That gets my Please, goat. they're already unsubscribing. <laughs> so we're back with another day of another discussion. Night. Oh, sorry, yes, another night of discussion of Halloween-related topics. Now, today we're going to talk... We're going we're gonna to share a little feedback with today's topic. This is one of our... our when we started thinking about doing this, you decided you would pull the audience, basically, about some subjects. And so you put some posts on our forum saying, tell us about your experiences with this or that. And not a damn person participated. <laughs> yeah, there's, there wasn't a large amount of participation, but that's pretty much par for the course on the uh, forum. So not a huge surprise there. But yeah, we're, we're going to talk about ghosts which is a pretty standard topic when it comes to scariness what oh yeah yeah we i mean we we have to talk about them every single year i'm sure because that's one of the big ones for me I, I i'm scared to death of ghosts and uh everybody has heard ghost stories and, and i would assume that everybody knows somebody who claims to have seen a ghost or felt a ghost or had their way, frankly, with a Intercourse ghost. Intercourse with a ghost. Yeah. yeah, you know, well, ghosts are one of those things that they're scary, but they're also relatable or, I don't know, they're, they're closer to what we are, basically. I mean, ghosts are supposed to be dead people. A werewolf or a vampire or a zombie or, you know, all, uh, the main creatures, a mummy, etc., they're not as relatable. You don't ever think, oh, yeah, my mom might be a vampire now that she's died or something like that. But any, anybody might think that they've seen their mom's ghost. Have you seen your mom's ghost? I have not seen have my mom's ghost. Have you just been ghost. saving up the story all this time? No, me? no, I have no story about my mom's ghost. But I'm just saying people, you know, anybody might think that. Or they might think, oh, the guy next door, the, the person that lived here before, really unlikely they're going to think that person is a a werewolf, but a ghost is something that people still, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but they like relate to it. They can understand it. It doesn't seem far-fetched or totally wacky like most other scary creatures do. You know, the ones that you see on uh, the Universal Monsters movies or whatever yeah I, I i seriously think my mom might be a gill man yeah no i think my mom is a merman <laughs> um <laughs> yeah that, okay that work would it? it it's just an easy it may be that more cultures have a concept of ghost or more religions or more just people than any of this other stuff um because they exist. <laughs> because they're real. But they seem more realistic, more believable than those other things. I, I, In a crowded room, you're not going to find anybody who actually believes in vampires. Maybe there's one with the black fingernails and stuff, but I'll bet you'd find a big chunk of people that believe in ghosts. Yeah, I mean, ghosts, like you were saying, religions. I think most religions, most people that believe in a life after death believe, even if it's reincarnation or whatever they believe that people have a spirit within them that makes their body live and do things and when the spirit goes away that's when they're dead 
And a spirit is a ghost, basically, when it's not part of a body. And so maybe that's why so many people believe in ghosts, because they already, you know, hey, I, I go to church and I believe I have a spirit, so sure, there's ghosts. Because that's just what happens when you die. Your spirit leaves and it becomes a ghost. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if you believe in life after death, chances are you believe in ghosts of some way, way of some stripe or another. Right, maybe you don't believe they're scary, evil things, but you might be persuaded to believe that way if somebody told you the right story or something. I don't know. Right, and I, I've told many times on the show, and, and I will continue to because it's just... It's just a, a constant source of inspiration and fun stories. I've got an uncle and aunt that are just, they insist that they live in a house that is haunted or near the other side or has some kind of significance. And I've, I've asked the, him, built on an Indian do you, I, I asked, do you know the history of the house? Is it, why, why is it this place? And he's like, no, it's not the place. It's us. Now, Virginia is my aunt's name, and she's from Guatemala, and he says Virginia has always had some kind of connection to the other side or to the spirit world or the, you know, whatever you want to call the afterlife kind of thing. Or, I, I don't know, to the other place, right? Even when she was a kid, and he said when I first met her dad, he said Virginia is really special, and she, you know, she has had all of these experiences, and uh, you just need to be warned that... that if you're not a believer in this stuff, you will be. And that, and, and anyway, you and I got together last week, and I was kind of worried that we wouldn't have enough topics to fill our 13 nights of Halloween. And then the next morning, I got a call that my uncle had driven up from Las Vegas. And what happened to be here? He and his wife had ridden up on a motorcycle. Imagine riding a <laughs> motorcycle all that far. I know people who did that within this last month. So yeah, I can't imagine. Okay, well I can't imagine people even riding like, a motorcycle. Yeah, I know people who like motorcycles like to ride them. Really? I see. That just doesn't make sense. That would be like it'd be like people who like football liking to play the game. That it's just weird. Yeah. See, I, that. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, you know, like Anyhow, I was just like, wow. He 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 drove up. He's here just yesterday. I was talking to my friend about, oh, you know, I wish that we had him around so that we'd have stories. And I, I so I said, what is he doing? And, like, and my mom said, well, we're all going out to eat at this big buffet restaurant that he loves to go to because he's a big guy. And I said, well, I've got to go to work. What, you know, it's a shame that we're not going, you know, early. And she's like, well, the plan is to go at 11 in the morning. I was like, really? It was just like all of the dominoes lined up. And I was like, really? I can actually go to this before work. 11 in the morning so that you can keep eating the buffet all the way through. until. That's, yeah, that's, that's how you go to buffets. That's I don't a know. scary story for another night. <laughs> no, you you but, must not be very experienced with them. He's just, well, yeah, he could put you to shame, the food that this guy eats. <laughs> what? I, I don't... No one puts me to shame. I demand a duel. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you would be... But like wow, I, I I stand corrected. I just I don't get how this guy can eat as much as he does, and and he should be one of those guys that's so big that he can't leave the couch that they have to cut a hole in the wall to get him out and all that stuff. You're gonna bring a crate in, but he's he's got good bio uh, genetics or whatever you call it. Uh, anyhow, uh, so I got together with him and I I said, hey, you know, I I know you're here to eat and eat and eat. <laughs> But uh, just uh, we're doing this podcast and we're going to do 13 episodes for Halloween. And she's like, oh, podcast is cool. And he started telling me about this ghost podcast that he loves to listen to. <laughs> I, I kid you not. He's like, there's a ghost show. <laughs> he listens has... to it on his ghost iPod. That's right. He's wearing it right now. Look, it's in his hand. You want to it's see like it? There's nothing in your hand, man. <laughs> anyway, I'm listening to the podcast now. But apparently there is this podcast called Anything Ghost that is... It's just got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes. And the guy gets on there and he says, you know, let's check the voicemail this week. And he plays listeners' calls and then he comments on them or whatever. And that's it for that week or a month or whenever he does the, the show. And he does like 90-minute shows. Can you imagine doing a 90-minute show? Jeez, that's so long. And, yeah, Who would just... listen to that? <laughs> 
but yeah, my uncle just loves this thing, and he had like three hundred of them just saved on his phone. On his ghost iPod. On his ghost phone, <laughs> ghost ghost pod. <laughs> and he's like, "Wow, you should listen to this." And I was like, "Well, I, I should, but I can't because I am a producer, not a consumer. Because I can't because I have all this stuff I have to do." But we're making our own podcast, and you know, if you wouldn't mind, and he's like, "Oh, well, yeah, how much time do you got?" And he just he has volumes of stories to tell about these encounters that he has. And, and and now you and I have had these conversations before. I still don't have a definitive answer, and I don't think there is a definitive answer, but it's like, how come I have never had any of the experiences that this man has had? And, you know, his explanation is that both he and his wife are special. Are Yeah, like that. They, they, they have a, they're cl a closer relationship with the afterlife <laughs> than other people do, than normies do. And he and his wife are specials. Unfortunately, you and I are uglies. Somewhere out there, there are the pretties. That's a Scott Westerfeld reference for all you uh, book nerds out there. Especially for you, L. Scribe Harris, who probably doesn't listen to this. Uh, hell no. Gets my goat anyways. She's too busy not giving us lines to... Uh... <laughs> no, but Brian Lincoln would be pretty. Yeah, there you go. He's and he pretty, hangs out with, like, Veronica Belmonts and people like that that are... And they uh... are the specials. Anyhow... I, I said, well, okay, well, tell tell me what's going on. And he says, okay, well, just, you know, sometimes Virginia will come home from work and somebody will be vacuuming upstairs. And you can hear, it's not just the vacuum in one place, but it's this, the noise that the vacuum makes when you're moving it across the carpet. The... And that. So the, he said the very first time it happened, she, uh, you know, she went upstairs, you know, calling who, you know, trying to figure out if one of the kids was over there or who was vacuuming. And she got upstairs and the vacuum was off. Nobody was vacuuming at all. And she said, but the, the next time that it happened, the vacuum cleaner was unplugged and the cord was all tied up. And it's happened so many times that she's now sure that it's her mother because her mother just was so thrilled when they brought her to America to visit at the idea of the vacuum cleaner, because in Guatemala they didn't have any, and just how useful that would have been, how neat that this this machine is, and she just and I was like, oh, okay, well that's not a scary story. I kind of want scary stories. Yeah, I was gonna say that makes life after death sound like the worst thing ever. Oh, well, then that's scary. You spend your eternity vacuuming the floor. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing better that a ghost has to do than vacuum the floor. I mean, I guess if if the, this ghost loved the vacuum because she didn't have one and wanted one, maybe that's that makes the afterlife not so awful. But yeah, that makes me so much more scared of death now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I was I was attempting to create a mood. Mood is gone. Uh, let me try again. Okay. Try a little harder. So, um, his oldest son got married, as you do, you know, to a stranger, as you do. And, oh. uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. You did, too. And, like, three months into the marriage, she's just like, no, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And so, they're not married anymore, and, and, and he... As you do. ...was forced to come move back in with his mom and dad, Despite, you know, being 22 or however old you are when you get married as soon as you possibly can. So he moved back in, but he didn't want to move in with mom and dad proper in like his old room and all that because he's a man now. He used to have a wife. So his dad said, well, we, you can move out into the guest. We can make a guest room out of my little workshop in the garage. And so they made him a room down there at the end of the garage. You know, you go into the garage and then there's a little room attached to the garage where my uncle used to have like all of his tools and stuff like that. But now it is his son's room. And uh, I guess one night um, somebody was knocking on the door from inside the garage and it woke my cousin up and he's like, yeah, yeah, who is it? Come in. And somebody was knocking and uh, they, they, but they didn't answer. And so he he uh, turned on the light and he says, oh, what the crap? And he went to the door and there was nobody in the garage. The garage was just dark. And so he went back to bed. And a little while later, there was a noise inside the room. 
And he opened his eyes, and there was somebody standing in the doorway of the garage and, you know, this room. And he just started screaming, Dad, Dad, Dad! And his dad heard this from downstairs, uh, from sorry, from upstairs, came running downstairs and through the garage. And he's like, what, what? And, you know, he turned on all the lights and his son was really, really freaked out. And there was somebody in the thing. And my uncle Len said, oh, shoot, man. Um, you know, in the time that you've been gone, we've had all sorts of weird stuff happen in this house. And I, I should have warned you. That sometimes, they, and he's like, no, you, there was somebody here. I'm not making it. And he's like, we don't make it up either. There really was something going on that we see and that we hear all the time. And he's like, but I, I don't think that, that it's bad or that you need to be worried about it. And he's like, it hasn't ever done anything to us. And he's like, no. It hasn't ever killed us yet. He's like, no, no. It's, I'm, I, what, yeah, I felt cold and, you know, there was somebody there. But I knew even when I opened my eyes that it wasn't a person, that it was something else. And, you know, his uncle, uh, my, my uncle, sorry, said, uh, well, why don't you come sleep on the couch or whatever? And uh, and he's like, I don't think I can be in this room anymore. I don't want to be out here I, uh, after that. You know, grown man. But he was really scared. You know, I don't want to sleep alone kind of thing. Uh -huh. Which, you know, I, I, I felt many times. And so he came in to, like, you know, sleep on the garage. And my uncle Len said, I'll go, I'll get your pillow or whatever. You know, so he walks through the garage and he... He goes into the room and he gets like the pillow and gets like, you know, a blanket or whatever. And the door slammed shut behind him. And he went to the door and there was nobody there. So as he was walking through the garage, he said, if you're there, if you can hear me, I want you to leave my son alone. He's like, this isn't funny. This isn't cool. You know, you've scared him and you're not welcome in here anymore. And he said he felt something move past him in the garage that although there wasn't anybody there he felt something as though you're being brushed by by some somebody who you couldn't see you know his son again like i said is, is you know 22 23 years old and he's just like you know i don't want to be in there anymore and, and he doesn't want to tell the story you know it was just happened to be my uncle and his wife who were here uh and he's like you know if you ask my boy about it you know he's like no i don't want to talk about that i don't you know he he was really really upset by it and really freaked out by it and i i guess he's like me he hadn't encountered any of this he hadn't had a whole life of hearing things or hearing voices or or or, or sensing presences or whatever and and so i think he reacted in much the way that i would react where it's just like no dude this is not a cool story to tell to other people this is not, you know, this is, this was a really bad thing. And I don't know when I'm going to get over that. But my uncle, for some reason, is just like, whoa, what? I want to tell you these stories. These are so <laughs> cool. And I asked him, I was just like, well, what, does this stuff not scare you? I mean, I, how can that not scare you to feel something, some presence? Just the door slamming on its own would be enough for me to be like, oh, oh, crap, man. You know, I need counseling. And he's just like, why? Well, most of the time, I feel like it's, it's just there. It's it shares the space with us. It's not bad. It just it happens to be there, and it's something else. And and I was just like, wow, you're you're a brave guy. And he's like, well, okay, well, if if you want to hear a, a bad experience, I I can tell you that. And then he looked and it, you know looked back, and his wife, you know, she was talking, just jabbering in Spanish to like my mom and stuff. And he's like, hey, well, let's go get something to eat. And, and so he told me a story that, you know, it wasn't okay to share with his wife. And afterward, he said, you know, she doesn't know some of this, so, you know, don't tell her. And, I, and I'm not super close to my aunt anyway. But I said, do you know that I wanted to tell all these stories for my podcast? And he's like, she's never going to listen to a podcast. You know, and I was like, oh, okay. So I, I basically have his permission to tell these stories. Which brings us to the people that have shared on the Internet. They, I suppose in an effort to give us something fun worth saying <laughs> worth saying on the show <laughs> they're sharing a couple of experiences too and 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 so um who who is the first one by well the first one is from Gino oh okay Moretto dee, 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 dee. oh come on man have you not grown past that doing that little song so Gino has he, he shared this I think last year on our uh, 
forum about this, you know, that went with the, the episodes where people, you know, we talked about ghosts and then afterwards he shared his story and he reshared it with us so that we could use it for this year's show. He says, this happened in 1987. I was in what we called fifth form at school, the first senior year of secondary school. I don't know what the hell this is. This is this is some New Zealand thing. See, I wish he had just said I was X years old, and so we were like, oh, okay. But uh, he wanted to share a little culture with us because we are lacking in it. Certainly. Anyways, <laughs> being young and stupid, me and two of my pals, Richard and Sean, decided that for Halloween that year... It would be a really cool idea to go and camp out in the field next to the town graveyard. This was a rural New Zealand town, and the graveyard was pretty much right on the outskirts of the town. There weren't really any houses or buildings nearby, and it was bordered by scrubby areas of grassland moving into native brushland. Halloween was on Saturday that year. We spent a good deal of that afternoon watching horror films. I have pretty clear memories of seeing Evil Dead 2 for the first time that day. Before heading off towards the graveyard sometime around 6. The days are getting longer at this time of the year for us in the southern hemisphere, so we had the tent pitched a few meters from the fence line into the cemetery grounds in the midst of a large patch of tall grass, about waist height. About the time the sun was going down, we were all inside the tent, talking about the usual teenage fair, probably about which girls we'd like to bed, <laughs> that we had absolutely no chance with, when we heard the sound of someone approaching. They were taking measures not to be heard, but that was pretty hard considering the grass surrounding the tent, which made stealth pretty much impossible. It got closer and closer. There was a pause, and then there was a very loud ARG, which failed to scare us in the slightest. It was another friend, Robert, who knew what we were up to and had come along to try and scare us. We'd asked him to join us, in fact, but he had something... <laughs> <laughs> but he had something the next day he had to get to early. Did I get you, he asked, unzipping the tent entrance and joining us inside. No, we chorused, and settled back into talking bollocks. An hour or so later, Robert left. It would have been between eight and nine, I guess, and it was getting pretty dark now. About half an hour later, we all heard this same not-so-stealthy approach towards us. The rustle hiss of something moving through the grass slowly. Oh man, Robert was going to try and scare us again in exactly the same way. We thought we'd turn the tables on him. We silently got up and made our way to the tent entrance, slowly unzipped it, and waited. We'd leap out and scream when he got close enough for us to scare him instead. That would learn him. The approaching body got closer and closer. When we judged that it was about a couple of meters from us, we piled out yelling. No one was there. There's no way something could have gotten away from us without us seeing its path through the grass. And it had sounded exactly like Robert's feeble attempts to approach us unheard. Something big... All three of us heard it, and had thought the same thing. There wasn't the trace of a breeze, and we searched the surrounding area for someone hiding in the grass. Nothing. We discussed packing up and heading back to Richard's house, but it was too dark, so we stayed there. Thankfully, without further strangeness. You know, I wish instead of That Gets My Goat, we had called our show Talking Bollocks. <laughs> It would make more sense, because we do a lot more talking bollocks than we do talking coat getting. Um, so what did you think of that story? It was, as he says, not a ghost sighting, but a weirdness 
thing going on. Could have been a ghost. Could have been who knows what it was. Well, see, this, the the locale helps in that story. The fact that they were near the cemetery. And he, you know, though he sets that up pretty well. I, while you were reading it, I was just like, wow, we are so lucky that people are willing to, you know, share these stories with us and provide free content for us because it's uh, it, it, it would be neat. We used to always talk about doing a radio show, and it would have been so neat. Right? We're going to open it up for, to calls, whatever you want to talk about tonight, folks. Right. And all that just all that stuff is so cool. And the, uh, the different dynamic that you get when another person has their pers- point of view or their they're a life experience and, or, and you know, maybe completely different uh, or alien to you like Gino is. You know, I, I heard that he has three nipples. What? And I... That's what happens in New Zealand? And so, uh, yeah, and apparently the toilet flushes the other way. What? Yeah, the, the poo comes up instead of Oh, going no! Um, so much worse than it is in the northern hemisphere. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, ultimately, it's so like, well, what was it? Was it nothing? Was it was it wind? Was it their imagination? Was it a wallaby? Um, you know, things like <laughs> I don't that. Think they have wallabies in New Zealand. I think that's purely Australia. They probably have more wallabies than they do here. They might. Uh, I don't know. It's it's that's cool. But you know, he could have lied and made it a little bit better. <laughs> he should have like that's what we do with our stories that's why ours are especially when we record and or we try to record and we forget to actually push the button and then we have to record it again the, the story is like twice as good the next time cuz i don't know twice of nothing is still <laughs> i i think a lot of ghost stories are kind of like uh Gino's story here where Something weird happened, and the, the, it's usually not like you saw something or you, you know what I mean. It's it's much more like Gino's where you heard maybe something that sounded like it had to have been somebody, and then it wasn't somebody. If I, uh, I, I, I bet that even I've experienced something like that. And sometimes it also seems like you got to put yourself into the right mind. It's like you were talking about your uncle and your uncle and your aunt, they're specials. You know, they basically, they believe in this stuff. And so it's almost like it's not a surprise that it comes to them. Um, you know, if you, like Gino did, go and you camp next to the cemetery... It's almost like you're setting yourself up for something like that to happen. I remember one time, and this is, you know, doesn't, it's not a ghost story per se, but one time when, one time when I was in seventh grade, we went to, we, we were making a video. We had to make a video for a class and we were, it was basically supposed to be a fake news program. So we did this and that for this video and in this news program, you're supposed to... Basically, we took stories that were in the newspaper, and then we had to write them up like news stories and then read them on on a video and make it seem like... And So one of the stories was that ar- archaeologists had found some thing, and so <laughs> the video we decided to do for this was we went to the cemetery, and then we were the archaeologists, so we, like, walked over to the cemetery and we, like, looked around for stuff while we were at the cemetery and this was our video for the archaeologists and while we were there and I don't know why this guy decided to do that but one of the guys that I was with whips out his schlong and pisses on one of the graves there he's like check me out guys (laughs) and he's pissing on the grave and I remember thinking, geez. But it, it was a stranger's grave? There was, was no a, significance to the grave no, at all. There was no significance. It was just some grave. And he's just like, yeah, look at me. I'm peeing on a grave. I'm so rad. Was he circumcised? Uh, I didn't get close enough to really get a good look. Odds are that he was. Okay. But yeah, I remember thinking at the time, oh, the person that that grave belongs to is probably going to haunt that guy <laughs> for so long. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> I don't know. I guess a seventh grader might think that. 
that's the kind of thing a seventh grader would go to, but it's a stupid thought. But yeah, I mean, if you get yourself, it seems like, into the right frame of mind, I, I could see myself freaking out. If I was that guy, perhaps, that actually did pee on the grave, I could see myself freaking out that night if I'd had my own thought like that, you know what I mean? Or if I'd actually said this out loud to him, oh, dude, you're screwed, man, that person's going to come and haunt you. And then you take that seriously, and you go home, and then everything, you know, any noise, because houses make noises. They just do. They're, you know, even on still nights when there's no wind, they creak, and they settle, and they make these noises, and and people are in the house asleep or something at night. Like, oh my gosh, the other night I was laying there in bed and I kept hearing a coming from my son's room. And I think he just had, he has the, he has this thing where he just, he's decided to lay upside down in his bed. So he's got his head at the foot of his bed and his feet are down at the head of his bed, which is up against the wall. And I'm pretty sure he just kept bumping the wall when he'd roll a little bit or whatever in his sleep. But man, it was freaky to hear this thumping coming from somewhere. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's somebody in the house. It's a burglar, is what I think, because I'm not necessarily a big believer in ghosts. But it would be so easy to be, oh my gosh, there is something in the house if you were a big believer. And I think there have been times when I've been believer enough to be like, oh my gosh, what in the crap is going on here? Well, well okay, let me interrupt, man. For twenty, okay, for a hundred dollars, you and I are going to go to the cemetery and you have to pee on somebody's <laughs> grave. For a hundred dollars, would you do it? <laughs> for a hundred dollars? And, 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 and give me your reasons why or why not. I mean, the reason why is obvious, but yeah, I think the reason why would be it's just a grave. There's, you know, I know a lot of people, I guess because the remains are down underneath, they attach meaning to that spot or something like that. The why not would be it's very rude. Pee on somebody's grave. Imagine if you were peeing on the grave when the person was coming to lay flowers on the grave of their loved one, what would you say then? Somebody walks up behind you and says, that's my father's grave you're peeing on right now. Why are you doing that? Well, see, the yeah, that, that that's when you argument. Just run. <laughs> that argument, I mean, just the living with yourself is, is worse, I think, than, uh, you know, some stranger sees you do this and thinks that you're a douchebag. Well... But you thinking you're a douchebag, that's right. worse. But I don't know, but there's no sense of, if there is a, a spirit world, that would be enough to to piss that thing off. I, I mean, it's, it's silly because the soul of that dead person, just that specific dead person, would have to have some connection to this world still, right? And you chose the grave just at random, but yeah, I, I don't know. And in my mind, it seems to me like the graveyard would be the last place that a spirit would not haunt or hang around. You know what I mean? Why would you just want to sit there at the graveyard, which is a place that you, when you're alive, you have no connection to really. Why would you be there unless it's some spiritual rule that you can't get too far from your actual remains or something like that you know otherwise it seems like the house that you lived in while you were alive would be the place you would haunt or something like that because or that's where, you, know, you, where were. you died too yeah maybe where you died yeah, because like if you died in a car accident you would haunt that stretch of road if you died in an old folks home you would keep appearing where you died if you died in a brothel I think that's probably a pretty good place to die. Yeah. And good place to keep coming back and haunting. Um, <laughs> Sorry, well, did you have more of the peeing? Than no, the no, there was nothing to that. It was just, you know, the idea, the getting yourself in that frame of mind of, the, you know, if you believe in it, if you think the idea and you give it credence, it seems much more likely 
that you will actually see something than if you don't. People like you and I who don't believe in these things very much, when I hear a thumping coming from the the wall, I don't think, oh, ghost in the house. I think, oh, person in the house. That's what scares me, is there could be somebody in there with a intentions of hurting myself, my wife, my children, something like that. Not so much uh, there's some unknown spirit or whatever here to do something. So, I don't know, that, that seems like one of the keys to the ghost stories. The people that have the ghost stories is the people that believe that that stuff is, you know, possible. Okay, well, on that note, uh, let's cut this conversation short. We'll come back in a couple of days and do the other stories, if that's okay. Right? I mean, you don't want each one of these episodes to be 40 minutes long, do you? No, no, they're not supposed to be that long, so we don't want to keep going. We do have a couple more stories from listeners, uh, as well as whatever else we can come up with. Pull out of our arses. But um, I would love to hear more stories from you guys. If you enjoy this thing and you would like to continue the discussion, maybe we can do it again next year and read some of the ones. Because I, I think Gino's story was from 2013, where he shared it, but then, you know, I asked for somebody to share more, and so this is an ongoing conversation. All right. So we'll see you again next time. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with more stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield, and stay out of the garage. That's right. And don't piss on graves. Yeah, it's try not, cool. not to. Yeah, it's really just, not. Just pee in a bidet if you can. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. I wish I had more good stories. I, I, you know, I know I've told on the air about jumping into the open grave on a dare and there was a coffin in it. But, yeah. But I, you know, I mean, like, what else do I have? Who was the guy that we made up a song about and the next day they died? On the Dune Steve, we were just like, yeah, so and so is dead, and so and so is dead, and, and you know, we made up. No, you don't remember that? Do you remember I don't that? remember that. I remember that song vaguely. But it wasn't like a listener, it was like a famous person, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to give you something so that we can end this episode and come back and say, hey, we're going to do, do more stories story? tomorrow. I don't We only have two in there. Right, but, right, but I two can more. tell more. You want to do one listener story, one story from your uncle? We've been going 30 minutes. Bob is your uncle. Bob is my uncle. <laughs>